Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at a MATLAB implementation for computing the convolution of x of n, a signal, uh, signal x of n, and impulse response h of n, that is, impulse response h of n, which have arbitrary time support, that is, they need not start at time or n is equal to 0. So, convolution of signals with arbitrary support so basically we have a signal x of n we have a signal x of n that goes through an lti with impulse response h of n and the corresponding output is y of n so usually to compute the output y for example in uh, matlab what we do is we use the function y is equal to convolution of x comma h but unfortunately this uh, function does not give us the output corresponding to the time support so we need to modify this function such that we get both y and also the time support that is let us say n y so we need to know both the uh, time the value of the time and also the corresponding signal values so let us look at the matlab code for this purpose so in this uh, modified convolution we can clearly see that uh, we have the uh, commands for computing the time support so for example if you have nx as the time support for the signal x of n and uh, nh as the time support for the impulse response h of n then the corresponding time support for the output y of n is given by uh, a vector starting at the uh, value equal to the sum of first value in nx and the first value in nh so let us look at an example illustrating this one So that is 0. So here x of n is not a causal signal. Basically it starts at minus 3 and say ends at plus 3. And then the h of n is definitely causal and it is 1 starts at 1 and ends at 6. So uh, when you want to find the convolution of these two that is x of n with h of n that is y of n is equal to convolution of x of n with h of n. So this can be determined by using the function conv. However to compute the time uh, support for this one we need to know the starting location of y of n and also the ending location of y of n so the starting location is basically given by the sum of the uh, uh, first value of x of n with the first value of h of n that is the time values that is the first time value of a, a corresponding to h, x of n and the first time value or the value of uh, initial value of n but corresponding to h of n so here in this case it will be minus 3 plus 1 so it will be the first value of n y will be equal to minus 2 will be equal to minus 2 and the last value will be the sum of the last value in nx or the uh, time index of x of n and the last value in the time index of h of n so it will be 3 plus 6 equal to 9 that is ny and the length of ny is usually uh, is definitely equal to the length of x of n plus length of h of n minus 1 so it will be capital m plus capital n minus 1 and the last value that is the last value will be equal to 9 so here there are 7 values here there are 6 values so the total number of values in y of n will be 12 because 7 plus 6 minus 1 is equal to 12 so the first value is given by minus 3 plus 1 and the last value that is m plus n minus 1 in this example it will be 12 and the la value location is given by 9 the, then in the MATLAB code we can see the same thing that is nyb gives the first value of ny so it is n of x of 1 plus nh of n that is the first value in the time index corresponding to x and plus the first value corresponding to time index of h and similarly we compute the last values and then we put them together in a vector with increment equal to 1 that gives us the time support for y and as usual we compute the convolution using the uh, inbuilt function conv so once we have the output we can plot them again in this implementation we generate a signal h or we have an impulse response h that starts at uh, n equal to 1 and then we have impulse response uh, we have the signal x uh, that has time support from minus 3 to plus 3 and the values are all 1 so when we run this convolution we can clearly see the this uh, x of n is the input with values from minus 3 to plus 3 and uh, h of n is the impulse response starting with value at 1 and ending at value 6 so uh, the location 6 so when we do the convolution between these two the starting point should be minus 3 plus 1 equal to minus 2 which you can clearly observe here 
and then it, the series or the values of y of n go up to uh, n is equal to 9. And when you just use the convolution function without the time support calculation, you can clearly see that the values start at 1 and end at 12 and the values are given uh, in correct order, but we do not know the exact time support. So to overcome this one, we have to compute the time support as well. So to summarize, in this video, we have looked at the convolution of signals with arbitrary time support. So especially discrete signals. So and as a discrete signal x of n goes through a LTA system with impulse response h of n, we get the output y of n. So if x of n or h of n have arbitrary time support, then the starting point for y of n may not be zero. That means if both of signals are not causal, uh, for example, if the signals x of n is not causal, then output y of n may not also be causal. So so in that case, uh, the inbuilt function c o n v is not sufficient. It only gives the uh, outputs, that is convolution output, but it does not give the time support. So to compute the time support, we have to find out the starting point of n of y, that is the index corresponding to y of n, and also its uh, ending point. So for that purpose, we modify the given uh, convolution function with by adding the time support. That is, we compute the starting value as the sum of the first value of index of x uh, plus the first value of the index of the h, that is impulse response. And similarly, the last values are the sum of the the last value of uh, uh, support for y is equal to the sum of the last values of x and h respectively. Thus, we compute the time support for y, and then, for example, in this case, we have to uh, we have the in signal itself, which is all ones for the time support from minus 3 to plus 3 and the impulse response which is minus 1, 3, 4 and so on with the time support from 1 to 6. So clearly the time support for the output y will be from minus 2 to six plus, uh, 9. So uh, that is what we can see in the outputs and we can also compare with the uh, traditional convolution function. So when we look at the output, we uh, this uh, graph we can see the inputs and the corresponding output with the appropriate time support. And also for comparison, we have the uh, uh, traditional convolution output, but with uh, just indices uh, from 1 to 12, not the actual time support. So thus we can compute the convolution output of a signal and its impulse and an impulse response, which have arbitrary time support. Thanks for watching.